Divorced Redditors, what is the craziest thing you or your former spouse did after divorce? While we were still married, she gets pregnant with a guy she was cheating on me with who is also married to someone else. She has this idea that he's going to leave his wife and they're going to get married. She got a lawyer and filed for divorce. I get a lawyer too. Only thing is that he works for his wife's father who is setting him up to take over when daddy retires. He realized that getting a divorce means his cushy career is over. Confesses everything to his wife and begs for her forgiveness. His wife takes him back and he cuts off my wife. Seeing that her dreams of living with her BF are over, she claims that I'm the father. Which is impossible because by that time, we hadn't had sex for more than a year before conception. This does not stop her from telling everyone who will listen that it's my kid. She has her lawyer drop the divorce proceedings. I tell my lawyer to start them with me as the plaintiff and that I want to dispute paternity. I move out. She starts stalking me. Shows up at my job and tries to get in. I work as a civilian in Rand at a military base. The MPs do not take any of her it and wind up detaining her when she tries to run past the gate. She calls me at work to bail her out or something. I tell her that whatever she's done it's not my problem and hang up. I also was able to get a restraining order, which she violated repeatedly. She asked for everything, both cars, the entire house and contents, savings, my retirement account etc, plus 7 years of spousal support. I offer no support and half of the assets she wanted to house. She'd have to buy me out and refinance in her name only when the kid was born. She tried to put my name on the birth certificate anyway, but I'd already successfully disputed paternity, so that didn't go over well. She had to go after lover boy, who was definitely less than happy to see her. In the end, we split the assets 50 stroke 50, sold the house and she got no spousal support. I don't know if she was able to get money for the kid from lover boy or not. She called me a few times after the divorce, wanting to get together and talk. The calls were in violation of the restraining order, but I never reported it. About 6 months after the divorce was final, I was offered a new job on the other side of the country. I took it and never told anyone outside of my family where I was going. Almost all of our friends believed her when she claimed the baby was mine and made me out to be the asshole. So I didn't really feel the need to tell them anything. Life is better now. She called my company. Talked her way up the chain to the president of the company, still don't know how she managed that, but she's smart, and told him I was suicidal and had threatened to do something drastic at work. Later I learned that she thought this would be a roundabout way of getting my address which I didn't share with her after I moved out because she's batted crazy. She removed the retaining clips for my windshield wipers, but put the wipers back on the arms. First storm after I got my car back from her. Driver side wiper flew off the car on interstate 40. Good times. My ex-husband started dating his stepmom who has been in his life since he was 11 years old. His stepmom and him are still together almost 5 years later. His stepmom confessed her love of my ex to his dad a few years ago and they have since divorced. The dad is now dating a 21 year old. I know all of this because I'm still close friends with my ex-husband's sister. It's so messed up and I'm so grateful I left him when I did. it. I can't believe this exploded haha. <laughs> Here's the highlights. Won't say where it all unfolded BC small towns. But they are all from New Jersey. I am not. The father and my ex-husband don't speak. Basically everyone in that family, except stepmom, obviously, hates my ex-husband and have cut him mostly out of their lives. It may have been a little grooming. But if you met my ex-husband you'd see he's all around a plotting, manipulative, itty person so I think it was the other way around. He constantly talked during our marriage about how hot she was. Pornhub if you are following, I'd happily play the non-nude narrator to a cinematic universe for the right price. Thanks for all the awards, upvotes, and comments. Makes me feel nice to get that off my chest. Don't marry crazy. Kidnapped the kids during their weekend visit and moved to a small town in the next state over. It took me two years to get them back. Less than edit more than. Wow this got huge. So everyone doesn't have to read all the comments. I did get them back. She eventually burned all her bridges in the town she moved to and went home to her parents house. 
Since her parents were not pleased with her choices and were on my side during the whole deal they called me to let me know where she was. I went and got them. This was over 20 years ago and they have both grown up just fine. I've since remarried and my second wife has been a wonderful mother to them. It took a lot of work to fix all the damage but it's mostly okay. The biggest scars that lasted was that my son has a distrust of women with authority. That he has worked really hard to get over. And my daughter was afraid to start her own family because she worries she would turn out just like her mom. He finally got over that and is expecting our first grandbaby this fall. My ex-wife told me I could leave my stuff in our house while I found somewhere else to stay. I assumed this was a good effort to keep things as amicable as possible between us. When I went to get my she had burned it all. So that was rough. Called me and pretended he had been hit by a car while we were talking. He even tried to voice the crowd that had gathered around his body. God awful acting. But pretty funny listening to him try to mimic a woman's voice. Points for trying to be inclusive. I guess. I think he was trying to get me to relive my trauma of being on the phone with a friend who actually had been hit by a car while we were talking. Too bad he didn't realize that hearing the real thing is worlds different than hearing a dumbass try to act it out. Edit. I am so happy that I shared this. Y'all are making me laugh so much. Kidnapped my three boys from my house when I went on my first post-divorce date. Our loved and trusted babysitter was with them. I left dinner ready and kids bathed and already in their jammies. Left for the movie theater when I got a text from my babysitter that she was sorry for not doing the dishes after dinner. So I texted back that's okay. I can do dishes later. But you've got a couple hours as well. The movie hasn't started yet. She was at home as my ex-husband had shown up. Lied and said he was supposed to have the boys that night and that I had said it was okay. I was livid. I knew he was a bit crazy. But I had no idea he was capable of this. I stepped out of the theater. Called him and he said if you are going to be dating strangers and endangering the lives of my kids. I will take them. WTF. So I called the police. They did the report. We went to court and he was found in contempt for violating our parenting plan. Stalked me for 5 years. Would make fake social media profiles to try to follow me. Which I would block endlessly. And would try to find where I worked so she could talk to me. This lady cheated on me with 7 different men 2 months after we were married. I kicked her ass to the curb and made her sign the court papers. When we had our day in court she cried in the judge's office while I just wanted to get this it done. After, my dad was with me and he threw $50 at her and told her to change your ducking last name. Good guy pops. I haven't seen or heard from her in about 5 years. Thank goodness. Wife cheated on me. When I confronted her, she grabbed a kitchen knife and threatened me. I told her to go ahead. She put it in my chest just deep enough to draw blood and cut down to my belly button. I hit her on top of her head. She fell to the ground. I left and, after signing papers, never saw her again. It's been 24 years now. Thank you for the awards. Peeps. Had no idea my idiot marriage at 20 years old would be the topic with the most upvotes. Those 12 months are full of good stories. Looking back. After he realized I was never going back. He told his mom that I had been stealing from the family the whole time we were together. Then he literally put it in writing that I had a key to his parents home and would sneak in and take his dad's guns and his grandmother's jewelry. And that he had been powerless to stop me. It was always his druggy sister. Always. Anyone with eyes could see it. But no one in the family wanted to believe it. Final straw that led to the divorce. Got drunk and drove her car into the middle of the desert. Sent her friend a picture of the GPS and said I didn't love her so I wouldn't come and look for her. She wouldn't answer my calls but kept calling her friend saying I didn't care. I looked for 2 hours before going back home because I needed to work in the morning. She came home and started banging things around and came into our room and threw her phone at me saying I didn't love her. Punched me in the face multiple times and went to jail. After I filed for divorce she lost it. CPS wouldn't let her kids stay at the house because of the DV charge against her so they stayed at her parents. She purposely stayed at the house so that I couldn't see my kids. 
I refused to be alone with her after for fear that she would hurt herself and blame me so I always went to the house with someone if I needed anything. She got tired of this and decided to just remove everything from the house while I was at work. I mean everything that wasn't in my kids bedrooms she took out of the house. Curtains. Ceiling fans. All of the furniture minus the dining table that I don't think she had room for. I thought well this sucks but at least she's gone so I changed the locks. She broke in and stole the locks the next day while I was at work. Left nothing but the holes in the doors to swing open in the wind. Took the window locks. Cut the power cord to the garage door opener. Took the blender that I borrowed from my mom and popped the air mattress that I borrowed to sleep on. Then she flipped off the main breaker to the house. Swore to the judge that someone else must have done it. All I wanted was custody of my son. I gave her everything else except one of our cars. She fought me through five hearings. I won. She never came to see him again. Took the sodas from the fridge as he walked out the door. Dumbfounded. Prior to divorce. He established a pattern of asking me to sleep with someone else. Usually MFF threesomes. Usually friends of his mine hours. Getting increasingly demanding moody until I conceded. Then reacting with extreme insecurity. Jealousy possessiveness. And need for reassurance afterwards until it happened again. It destroyed me as well as all of my in-person friendships and I still don't understand why he needed to go through that psychodrama over and over. Or why I didn't leave sooner. To clarify, there is nothing wrong with swinging, polyamory, or ethical non-monogamy. But he really just wanted an on-demand porn service. And couldn't take no for an answer. And could not stand the thought of me having feelings for anyone other than him. Yet consistently thought I was waiting to cheat on him or abandon him. Shortly before I filled for divorce, he broke into my apartment twice. Once because he wasn't done talking and then because the apartment complex director told him I couldn't legally kick him out of the apartment. Sexually assaulted me while I was sleeping. Called the cops and DCF because I blocked him on messenger after close to 24 hours of non-stop texting from him. Chose to publicly throw a couple of punches and an energy drink at the, still concussed, to be survivor he'd chosen as my most recent six partner, as if any of this was that person's fault. Then he assaulted me in the backyard while refusing to leave, and told the police I had attacked him. I filled a restraining order and divorce on the same day. Four months after our divorce was finalized and he was granted full custody of our three kids for every school vacation. He decided to move halfway across the country to live with his mother. She's still taking care of him. His kids aren't particularly interested in talking to him and haven't seen him in over a year. I offered to pay for him to stay here over the summer so he could see them. But he said nah. This is a fair reflection of his level of engagement with his kids prior to divorce. 2. I don't doubt that he loves them. But he rarely chooses to spend time with them. Because it's stressful. The cops. Lawyers. Office of Child Support Employees and the judge have all responded the same way to his endless victim spiel. A tired sigh. A roll of the eyes. He continues to think his situation is everyone else's fault and totally unique. He follows me here and has quoted some of my posts in court. Hi Brian. Eater. Thanks for the upvotes. Let me know if you've had a similar experience. He's texted to call me a lying whore yet again. I've invited him to respond here, or please quit stalking my social media, as I've asked, or accept that we have different ideas of how things went, but we'll see. When I told my ex-husband I wanted a divorce, the next day after I went to work he packed our entire house into a U-Haul and put it in storage. Even with a court order he refused to give my stuff back. I left my marriage with the clothes on my back. Years later he decided he was above the courts because he got away with that and took our son across country telling me he was moving with one day notice and told me I couldn't do anything about it. Of course I promptly hired a lawyer and we went back to court and he lost joint custody but it took a year of fighting. Chasing him down. And not seeing my son. There are more stories but those are probably the worst. Died of a drug overdose. To be fair. Her drug addiction was the reason for the divorce. So maybe that isn't too crazy. Laundry list but my favorite was his sister sent a Facebook message to all of his contacts the day of our separation, including my family. Before we announced anything, 
Her message stated everyone should immediately delete me and if I said anything about why we separated I was lying and not to listen. Basically this created a lot of curious questions and a lot of laughs. She got custody of our three kids. Got 70% of my take home pay for child support requiring me to move into the barracks. I was in the USAF. Then she immediately moved out of state without telling me. Despite the divorce decree requiring my consent, all but guaranteeing I would have no contact with my kids. That's not the crazy part. The crazy part is just a few years later she decided she didn't want to be a mother anymore. So she signed up with a carnival. I think she had the hearts for one of the ride operators and left the girls on their own without telling me or the girls beforehand. She called my oldest daughter a few days after leaving to tell her to call me. They hadn't called me before that because they had apparently grown accustomed to their mother disappearing for days at a time. Edit. Some have asked what's happened since. This was decades ago. My children are all grown and married. With their own children. They all learned after coming to live with me that I wasn't the monster their mother had brainwashed them to believe I was. And they all agreed to be adopted. As adults. By the light of my life. My wife, whom I would never have met if I hadn't been divorced. Only one of my children has any contact with her mother. Mainly because my daughter still lives near where she grew up. That's where her husband and his family live. So that's where she'll stay. The best outcome of all. All of my children had the best example in the world of how not to be a mother. And consequently all. Five. Of my grandchildren are having the best childhoods possible. Colon. After years of telling me she wanted a child, that she wanted to be a mom, that her life's dream was to be a Sam, she got pregnant with the first guy she slept with while we were getting divorced and put the kid up for adoption even before it was born. This was a long standing thing with her. She always wanted something, car, house, dog, cat, marriage, etc, and the second she got it she immediately hated it. Called me on my birthday two years after divorce offering to make it special and was quite insistent that I take her up on that opportunity. Was not amused to find out my gf, now wife, had heard the entire conversation on speaker. Good times. Remained friends. We remained on good terms and still celebrate holidays and birthdays as a family. His two youngest kids, with his current wife, call me aunt and my youngest calls him uncle. This was from even I was a kid and my parents were going through a divorce. My dad was a total sociopath. Manipulative. Physically and emotionally abusive. Drug dealing. The whole nine yards. Even my mom was finally able to get out. He still had visitation rights. His family kept on bugging my sister and me. Still under 10 years old. To try to convince my mom to talk to him. She finally did try to talk to him when she came to pick us up at the police station from a where it was agreed to meet when he had his time with us. They immediately got into an argument. He started throwing one of his temper tantrum. Grabbed my mom in front on a cop from the LAPD trying to beat her. Then the cop grabbed him. He let go of my mom with a look of pure terror on his face. I think that was the day I realized he was sociopathic and didn't want anything else to do with him and his craziest bible thumping family. We were living in a different state and she wanted to move back to her home state a year into our marriage. I really had nothing tying me down in that state so I was down for moving if that's really what she wanted. It had been about 6 months into the move and she cheats on me with a co-worker while I was working full time and trying to finish up my bachelor's degree. She tells me that she didn't feel the same way about me and that she needed to move out to do some thinking. It's driving me insane trying to think about what could have gone wrong. I had a suspicion about that co-worker but I didn't have any proof. I checked our phone account online and sure enough they were talking every night after work while I was out working. I followed her one time and sure enough she was going to this guy's house. I confronted her about it and she finally fessed up. So they continued dating after we finally divorced and I was able to move on with my life. She ends up getting pregnant by this guy and he disappears before their baby was even born. Karma definitely came back to bite her after the hell she put me through all alone in a new state with no friends family around. My ex has done a ton of weird stuff. Thankfully most of it not aimed at me. While we were separated and working on our divorce, he would come whine to me about relationship issues. With my cousin, 
with whom he'd had an affair and for whom he'd left me. Mind you, he'd moved in with not just her but her common-law husband, and then was upset by how many other boyfriends she had. This is my cousin who has more babadities than she has babies. Two of her offspring are simultaneously half-brothers and cousins. She's never been known for her monogamy. In other words, but he claimed to have been in love with her since they were children, and this was magically supposed to make her return his affections. Among the best witness from a distance bits of this nonsense were him getting jealous of her visiting her husband and running her off the road in his work van, and generally hanging around screwing her instead of taking jobs, to the extent that there were trainees making more money than he was after he'd been there more than a year and he was eventually invited to resign or be fired. Then there was the time he was doing armed security and angry at how taking our children on a first date to Austin. He expected to be allowed to stay over at this woman's apartment with his children and her children. And she was rightly horrified at the whole thing. Didn't go over well. Had an argument with his girlfriend at the time. Not my cousin. But the ex-wife of a different cousin. And drove to her house in his work vehicle to threaten her with a gun. This resulted in a firing. A restraining order. And loss of his right to carry a gun. Then there was the girlfriend who insisted that if he really loved her he'd move into the homeless shelter with her, so he fabricated being kicked out of his parents' house and spent the requisite months sleeping outside on the shelter's patio before intake, then spent years longer than the relationship living in the shelter, only finally leaving to move in with a woman he'd met a month earlier, after ostentatiously asking our children's permission, as you can imagine, they felt they had no choice. Basically it's been 13 years of reeling from one relationship to the next, all overlapping, and the kids pulled into them from the very first second. He's currently trying desperately to find another girlfriend to move in with as the current one is kicking him out to move to Virginia with a new boyfriend of her own. This after some time of subjecting the kids to loud arguments over his porn addiction and their dead sex life, and naturally blaming me for the fact that his two oldest children both refused to talk to him at all. Two of my shortcomings as a wife, by the way, were being too classy. He quoted Confederate Railroad to me, and not providing the drama he felt requisite in a relationship. She wanted the divorce and after it was done she cried inconsolably into my chest while I hugged her. Kind of a mind duck for me. I was sending $600 a month to support my daughter because she's the only thing I give a it about. My ex texts me and tells me I need to be sending $1200 a month because she's broke and can't pay her bills and I should feel guilty about it. She left me for another guy while I was on deployment I told her to go duck herself call my lawyer. Not me but my so. His ex-wife got married a few days after receiving the court's final decision on the annulment of marriage case. In our country, we don't have divorce. Well okay. He has moved on already. Now her new husband plans to have his marriage to her annulled too. Edit. Hey. This blew up. Yes. We are in the Philippines. So ducking hard to get an annulment here. I wish we could have divorce. Where parties can end their marriage in amicable terms. During the whole process of divorcing she insisted she wanted to be single and hadn't cheated on me. Five days before we sold our house she posted on Facebook that she was in a relationship with the guy I had asked about her cheating on me with. A year later they were engaged. A year after engagement they are married. Here's a more wholesome and true one. He had Sunday dinners with my mom for many years after our divorce. He never had a real mom. Long story. So I didn't mind sharing mine as long as I didn't have to be there. He had his law enforcement officer friends run my new boyfriend. One of their wives told me when I called her to offer my support when I heard she and her husband were getting divorced as well. She would stalk my reddit account and angrily text me if she didn't like my posts talking about her cheating on me. I came home from seeing my grandmother on her deathbed and found she had cheated. She also texted me accusing me of sabotaging her attempts to get a job that requires a security clearance. Apparently it was my fault and not the fact she had already been denied a security clearance for mental instability. Not me, but my grandparents got divorced when my mom was about 17. In their legal battle. They worked out that they would each get 50 stroke 50 of the sale of specific shared assets. There was an old junky car and a fairly new RV. My grandpa sold the RV and the car for $1 each. He handed my grandma a buck in court. 
he basically got everything. House, car, furniture, I just wanted out. Two years later he is broke and homeless. Wanted to get back together. Sorry, but hell no. We divorced because I am gay. Afterward she remarried twice. Her second husband, Jack, died. And she remarried for the third time total, including me, to Randall who was her worst choice of all. She finally ran him off. We decided to vacation together to New England, Montreal, and Quebec City to check some states off my list of states I have visited. All of them by the way except Hawaii. We did the trip like a survey course in that we spend one night in many different towns and cities. For instance, we spend one night in Millinocket, Maine. And we climbed MT Katahdin the next day. Later we took an 11 day cruise to Alaska together in 2005. We divorced in 1981. My ex died in 2009 of cancer. Of course there were painful times and heartaches associated with our divorce after 18 years of marriage and the birth of two sons. But time can heal a lot of wounds and former spouses can appreciate the part of the journey they took together even when they have moved on to their next adventure. During the divorce but after separating my friend's ex tried to claim less assets than he really had but she was dropping the kids off one day and found retirement fund statements sitting on the kitchen table. Despite claiming that they had been using his income for living expenses and hers was going into savings. Somehow he managed to tuck away over a million dollars into those two funds. Under his name only. And she brought it up with the lawyer he claimed that had just forgotten to put those on the list. The divorce was fairly amicable. But he met a woman on the internet and moved her into his apartment a month later. She hated seeing me because I had hurt him but was also apparently still in love with him. Spoiler. I was emphatically not. She decided that getting my son removed from my custody would solve all her problems. So she called my work and made ridiculously false allegations to my administrator about my conduct with students but sounded drunk high and wouldn't leave a name or contact information. Admin pulled her number from the caller ID and X confirmed that it was that heifer's Oregon phone number. I had to get a temporary protective order for her. So X had her move out and she slashed my tires on Mother's Day. He confirmed that one after they broke up, y'all. He kept dating her for another year even though he knew about everything. My therapist at the time told me that ex probably found her behavior flattering. My ex-husband messages calls me every November. Our divorce was finalized November 2015. Last time I decided not to answer because I'm in a committed relationship. But every year, like clockwork. Our divorce was messy to say the least and after our final court hearing we stood outside for like an hour talking about his girlfriend problems. I guess he just needed a friend but I don't anymore. At least, I don't need him as a friend. Told everyone I was physically abusive, at the time and now, I am not intimidating in any way. It didn't come out until 2 years later when she needed to change something in our agreement but couldn't unless I agreed. I made her tell her family that it was something she said when she was mad. Her mom apologized to me for saying things at the time. We are friends now, have a son together so it's best, but goddamn I hated her guts for 5 years. My ex stole a car and did 18 months in state prison. Based on what I was able to find online at the time, he approached a car dealership and showed interest in buying a vehicle. They allowed him to take it home for a 24 hour demo. He never returned it. They reported it stolen after they attempted multiple times to contact him to return it. They then contacted the state police who put a bolo out. They found him driving the vehicle on the other side of the state where he thought he wouldn't be found. I found out when I got an unexpected phone call from the sheriff's office. I asked why they were calling me about this. They said my ex I told them I would vouch for him as a character witness. I told the officer over the phone that my ex was a lying sack of it and shouldn't be trusted. The officer laughed, thanked me for my time and hung up. Sex, like, right after, we got the divorce, left the courthouse and decided to have lunch. After lunch went back to my house and had six. That was several years ago. Last year we decided to get back together and well probably end up remarried later this year or next year. Continuously texted at all hours threatening suicide. I would rush over to do a welfare check and he'd open the door with a smile hey. Since you're here want to come in for a beer sex? 
Hard pass. Starting upping it. I rush over. He's nowhere to be found. I'm calling his parents. Friends. Turns out he was just at a bar. Another time he left a funeral playlist. A note. Disappears off the face of the earth for almost a day. Reappears so drunk he almost ran into the house. After that, I just couldn't take it anymore. So the next time he started texting I warned him that I would call the police if he was being serious. But I wasn't coming to check. He went 0-100 real quick about how he'd be dead before they got here. ETC. So I called them. He ended up getting 5150 ed for the night. Very upset with me the next day. Demanding a ride and so on. I hung up. Called his mom. Said not my mess anymore here's the address. So then he just found new ways to torture me for a few years but that one stands out the most.